Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel Testing Mini Bikes. I'm your friend Amudan Shakti Vail. Today again we're gonna continue with our code refactoring. And you know, in last video we could have faced some issues while loading the URL and maximizing the window. So I have just added two methods for now, and this may not be the best place for this, but for now it's okay. I have created two static methods called load URL where I'm using the config service to get the base URL and uh, I'm using the maximize window, right? So I hope you all know what is this config service and why we are using this. And let's go back to the driver. And there is one error that's uh, telling, you know, I have, I don't want others to extend this. So <clears throat> in the same way, I don't want someone to create uh, instance for this because I all have here is static methods, right? So I don't want to expose my constructor. Good. So apart from that, uh, we are good uh, with whatever the stuff that we have developed so far. So this is the test case that we have developed and let's try to run it um, again. So, yeah. Hey guys, if you, if you find this video a uh, little slow, please change the playback settings to 1.5 or 2. <coughs> So you notice it's uh, trying to launch the URL now. And yeah, so the, that is one problem. If you notice this, this particular website by default loads the URL. So the username and password. So you don't have to enter it again. So for example, the password is admin. So the admin is actually entered twice. So I don't want to do that, right? So either, you know, there are two approaches. One, you don't enter any of these things here, directly log in, or you can clear the, you know, uh, text box before entering the new value, right? So what I can do, since we have this uh, send keys already implemented, we can basically go to that utils class, uh, Selenium utils and Selenium actions, and wait and send keys before doing all that. What I want to do, I want to basically do element dot clear before doing the send keys, right? Yeah. <laughs> Let's again run the test now. This time it should work. So if you notice it cleared and re-entered again. So it's now navigating to this dashboard page. It should basically click on customers and then the submenu customers. Okay. Um, there is something happened, but I could not see it navigated to customers page. So let's do a debug. Okay, let's go here and let's go here and I'll put a debug. Okay, I'll put a debug point here and I'll go to, you know, the test engine or XML, and this time I'll debug it, okay? I don't think it loaded the new customer's page. Let's see, right? I have already guessed what is the problem because we have two menus that are of same XPath. So I think it clicked that menu again. Let's see. So this is something, you know, <coughs> we have to, you know, this is based on the application. These things can happen. We need to debug, in, uh, you know, and then we need to understand what's happening. So the, the website is taking a little bit of time to load. And for now, if you notice the customers are already clicked. And when I try to click on the customers again, I think it will it will click this, right? So because this is the one that's that's found first. So I think it will again click this and then it will collapse that particular menu bar. So that's what it's happening because these both have almost same XPath. If you notice, the XPath is the same, right? So and this is a problem <clears throat> let's try to understand uh, let's do a skip of this and the skip of this let's go there i'll do a skip again if you notice it it got collapsed so i think it's clicking this twice instead of clicking this either we have to change the xpath or we need to you know find another way to do it so for example let's try to change the xpath here right so there's uh, dock this to the bottom of the screen and uh, so this is the x path that we have but if you notice the a tag previously we just used an x path that is ju with just a so this time <coughs> i will add additionally add href attribute to it okay so let's go there uh, to the e commerce and uh, here i will add <coughs> additional attributes Right. I think, yeah, I had the rate. 
okay either h h f equal to what of the value right and this time it should work let's let's try to stop it and then rerun the whole thing right i'm actually doing a wait uh sleep uninterruptedly for three seconds which means it, it is like a thread or sleep but without using thread or sleep we are actually doing that right so just in case your manager knows about thread or sleep so we are just using a different method to hide it and this is working now and guys we we code a little we test a little that's how the things work right yeah so it now you know came here and then on top of it i i just need to click on add new and then do further operation so basically once i click this i need to add this is add new button and then i need to enter the these details so that's the test case that they have so first let's go here and these are two buttons again either you can club this into the same page itself for time being either you can you know create these two buttons alone into a separate page or you know within the customers it's up to you you know in in this case for simplicity reason since i have already com uh, covered composition i'm i'm clubbing them into the customers page itself so let me go ahead and uh, start creating a page uh, for now this is not a page component if you want to create a top menu component with add new and export you can do that for now i'm not doing it i am just clubbing it into this right so it's just an approach how you find because it's just a two elements and i don't think it it's it's needed to be separated again it's it's up to you how you want to do it um here i can name it as a basically customers a page or new customers page whatever you feel uh comfortable add new customers page right and yeah and here again i can basically do final so that nobody extend this and let's come here and this this seems to have a lot of uh, stuff so first i want to click on the add new so this add new is basically uh, i can use contains text and then add new so this is basically an a tag and then after that we also have a lot of fields here so if you notice uh, we have input tag with search email again i say told i will be using x email uh, i will validate with email and then this one so i will i will check for the label email and then from there i will come to this particular email so this so maybe for one i will write it so for example i have one label text equaled email right and from here i want to come to this place right so i'll i'll go one level up two level up and i'm here i want to go to the following sibling now right again guys you can use parent or ancestor whatever you feel comfortable for now I'm not using them following hyphen sibling okay colon colon div right so that's the div sibling and you say that you have an input tag which is basically what we are interested in right so this is an x path that i i you know we have to write so let me copy this go here this is one of the x path so by and then you know this is basically an email right so text box email okay and by dot x path okay again if you notice there is a similarity that you know this is email if i just replace this with first name it will find the first name for me right so again we can use dynamic x paths and then for now i'll click on this hopefully this also save having the same one sorry guys we need to find for this so again uh, i'll go to the label and label is this i'm going two levels up after that there is a div tag so i think the x path will still match so there shouldn't be any problems here so for example whatever the x path that we have written now just copy that and i'm also checking in this place it's actually matching right so the same way you can write x path for all of them for now you know i'm not doing it because um, i I'll, i'll do it offline because it may take a little bit of time and here what i'm going to cover i'll take some uh, you know text boxes some radio buttons some check boxes and some some select drop downs and i'm not going to work on all of them because i try to find a more optimized way of doing this okay my intention is not to automate this website but to tell how to effectively do this right so i'll create the locators offline but before that if you notice one thing when we are developing our test we navigated to customers page and this 
particular thing is basically not returning me anything so this is void and hence this dashboard page is also returning void so that i cannot change anything now for example i'll just create only one method now uh, maybe uh, i have the setter uh, using the page method generator and here if somebody is passing me a string email what i have to do i need to use selenium actions dot wait and send keys uh, so text box email and what of the email they pass right so this is what i want to do right so now i want to change this right so if i go to the dashboard page once i click on customers i need to change it okay so i cannot change it because this is returning me a void right so this is a problem here so what i have to do i now i need to uh, interact with uh, basically the customers page so what i have to do i have to create final uh, customers page a new customers page a new customers page and here can basically do this dot add new customers page equal new a new customers page so you can do this right so and then here again you need to stop your chain and then you need to add <clears throat> add new customers page dot set text box email and then pass blah 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 your email right so now this breaks the flow and yeah, this is fine to some extent but if there is any better way how we can do this right so based upon my requirement it should return whatever i want right so that i can do the chaining without breaking my flow and more importantly i can if possible i can also avoid this particular variable here right so this is a dependency that we need which i can if if there is a possibility that i want that we can avoid that's better right so so let's let's see how the method generics can help you here right so assume you have set sub menu method and i will also add one more parameter that's of class type okay so what is this i'll explain this don't worry so i'm going to expect the caller to to pass me a class type so that i will rip you know i will return the instance of that particular class type to him okay so yeah so what i am telling hey i'm going to return uh, a t type right whatever the class this is the generic type i'm going to receive right so i'm going to return that same thing okay so what i'm going to do class dot okay new instance this is almost similar to like your you know a new dashboard page okay this is almost this is the instance right so you can also do like this right so that's absolutely no problem now so now the caller has to basically give this right so basically i am doing return right and i go here and the caller can de define what he wants so suppose i want add cust add new customers page dot class okay now i define what i need so i can go here and it's still throwing error because you know it's a, it's a checked exception you can either throw this checked exception like instantiation exception or a legal access exception but you know for now i'm just not really bothered about it so i'm using lumbox sneaky throws to you know basically uh, do whatever they want but i don't want to you know add try catch blocks and uh, you know or to throw this you know checked exception in the method signature i don't want to do that so i'm do sneaky throws right now i go to the dashboard page and now this guy is going to return me actually this customers page so i can basically do whatever the stuff i want without even relying on the words right so you can basically remove this so you can continue the chaining without you know breaking the flow right so this is how you can use method generics this will be really helpful when you are using dynamic xpass okay tomorrow if if someone is is actually clicking on sales and then clicking on shipments you need to return shipments page right so if you create a method that is void that might break the flow if you return a method that returns customer space you have to return 1000 because there are a lot of sub menus here so the the effective way to do this is generic type so whatever the class that you are going to pass to me okay what of the generic type you are going to pass to me i'm going to return that so guys this t indicates i'm going to use a generic type of t in this particular method right so and this is basically returning a class and again guys you can use class as two z's or you can use type if you don't want to use class sometimes you feel confused see 
this is a class type right so normally i cannot use class because class is a reserved keyword in java so i cannot use it so normally people use class with two double you know is these are you going to use type whatever you feel very comfortable with right so i use class and type interchangeably whatever you feel comfortable so this is the advantage of using uh, generics with the method return type that true specifically in our uh, test automation space so what i'll do i'll i'll in the meantime you know i don't want to create all these locators in the video so i'll create this uh, locators and then i'll get back to you guys in another great video until then tada bye bye from me and you all have a very good day tada bye bye